but it's just day two of lockdown number two and our first lockdown so we've come out for our exercise and what exercise we're getting we're climbing up this big hill I think it's called Cracks Hill and uh, it's sort of a, I think it's a beacon place so there's uh, beautiful views yeah there's a beacon just there and the uh, canal is just down there you can see that sparkling in the sunshine and we've got windmills all around well wind turbines over there back there if you can see them past the sunshine and more over there so the there are wind turbines all around creating power which I really like I think the uh, I think the wind turbines are very good I like them and I feel like they're quite as we as we go along and we've driven past loads of them and I always think they're quite majestic um, other people think they're a blot on the landscape but I don't think they are I think they're they're really good and it's I know the wind doesn't always blow when you want it to but it does a lot and it does create a lot of I think free electricity and I, I quite like that idea but the sunshine on these trees look at that isn't that beautiful and the views from up here we put that the sunshine just out of shot there you can see oh right over here and isn't it so quiet Look at that. beautiful beautiful uh, late evening or late afternoon sunshine very very peaceful up here if there wasn't some madman with a camera <laughs> talking away to himself it'd be extraordinarily peaceful really lovely um, and we're dealing with lockdown well so uh, we've decided that uh, while we're in lockdown we're going to spend more time relaxing so it's those late mornings um, so we're getting up late it takes up you know we're getting up after 10 and uh, then sort of getting on and doing cleaning and pl I'm planning DIY and stuff like that so that's you know so that's really good we're um, and then you know getting out because we're you know we're in a we're in a little community that is um, it's the community is just a it, like about 20, 20 boats that have, that have got people on and uh, none of us really go out so it's a it's a bit of a a sort of lockdown safety zone if you like we just go out and the only people we've seen out are other people that <laughs> were coming out of the marina to go for a walk along the towpath on the canal or up to this place called Cracks Hill and there's a couple of uh, sort of woodland areas that have been sort of mapped out and paid for by the Millennium so they're you know they're like 20 year old um, open spaces which is quite nice but I, I tell you the the views I love the views across the countryside I mean you know and, and more wind turbines these views are stunning
Well, our shopping order arrived today and we got our <coughs> panic buying items uh, come through. And I was surprised to see a, uh, a bottle of this. I'd never heard of it before. I don't, I don't even know how to pronounce it. K.O. Run. Cow Run. Uh, ah. <laughs> it's got a little pronunciation thing underneath. Karoon. It's, <laughs> it's Karoon Gin. Small batch Scottish gin. Now, who'd have thunk it? Scottish gin. I've never heard of it before. But apparently, Wendy says it's on special offer at Tesco. Yes, Wasn't it was it? a club club price. I saved um, six pounds. Six, six pounds. I saved six pounds, and it was oh, the, the ink's running out for, on the list here. I can't read it. That's no, a standard bottle, seventy no, centiliters. Six and, it, and the original price is so it was twenty-two. What pounds? Original price. I think so. Original price twenty-two pounds. Special offer. Six pounds? No, the original. Oh. I can't re look. You read it. I know oh. I saved six pounds. I cut the ink. Look, uh -oh. printed this. When out. he saved six, it wasn't six, six pounds. I can't tell you how much it is because I can't see it. Isn't it terrible? It's so faded <laughs> away. You have to have glasses nearby, like me. But the ink's running. Oh, out. oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. It. It was. It was quite expensive. Mm. It was. Uh, the numbers have rubbed off on the thing. On the. Uh, it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's supposed to tell you how much it is just there. But <laughs> I can't even re read it. So um, it's an extortionately expensive uh, bottle of gin. Usually £28. But apparently, Wendy saved money on that, so that's good. We wouldn't normally pay 28 quid for a bottle of gin. But um, Wendy did have the other panic buy, which was the Absolute Vodka. Well, I don't know how much that was. That's absolute Vodka. Uh, yeah, I think that was... Got a bit of money off of that as well, I think. That was £25. But that's a... L uh, yeah, I think that's a litre bottle. Yeah, that's one litre of vodka. So, um, what I do with those is add them, not in the same glass, but we make uh, gin and tonics, vodka and tonics, and also I have uh, bottles of uh, dry vermouth, like martini, and we make martinis um, some people like to call the vodka martinis vodka teenies and um, the gin martinis are just martinis right so we make those um, one thing one thing I am reminded of by talking about that is that we don't have any olives so when we go out maybe when we go to the local co-op shop they'll have a, a packet of olives now, I do like an olive with a martini, uh, whether it's a vodka martini or a gin martini. I do like to have an olive in there. So it feels right. I'm not sure it alters the taste of it. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Um, I know that <coughs> my son over in Australia, he likes to make dirty martinis. Now, I didn't know what they were. But apparently, uh, you make the martini and you put a bit of the olive uh, juice in the martini and that apparently makes it a dirty martini i'm not sure about the quantities that of the of the olive um liquid that you put in but it, it's sort of a salty water isn't it so you put that in and it makes it a dirty martini improves it or not i don't know um i quite like martinis because you can sit and sip those really nice so we've had all the shopping delivered, and Wendy is exhausted, aren't you, darling? Wend. Well, you stressed <laughs> me out because... It... Yeah. We've got a phone call.
This footpath is over the medieval track which linked the cluster of farms in Oak Lane and Drayson Lane to Craxhill Field, one of the three great fields in the parish. At dawn, people would take the track to work in the field, returning at dusk. Alongside the track was a ditch and ancient hedge, which was the boundary of the orchard belonging to one of these farms, now called the Homestead. A listed stone building dating from at least 1640. Any remains of the hedge are in the gardens of houses abutting this path and between fallow fields and Dun Close. Well, the solar panel works, <laughs> but the uh, charge controller that I've got on there, which is uh, one of those cheap blue ones, I'll show you a picture of that in a minute, isn't, it doesn't really tell me enough information in the way I want it. I'm sure there's lots of information on there, I could look that up, but I can't tell which bit's which. I don't have a manual. The online thing didn't really make much sense to me. That's well, probably me. But what I'm going to do is I've got a Victron um, smart controller, charge controller. So what I'm doing is I'm covering up the solar panel. And, um, well, you'll notice I've got the engine running because the batteries are not charged up again. They, they really run down. They're just over 11 at the moment, or I think that's 12 volts. They're just, just on 12 volts at the moment. So I sort of run the engine to charge them up. Because there's no, although we're hooked up to shore power, there's no battery charger. So I sort of run the engine for a little while, which boosts them up. Now, um, I run the engine every sort of couple of days really, which is really driving me mad because that, we shouldn't have to do that. And I really must get on with installing the MultiPlus inverter charger, but that's quite a big job because that what that means is, you know, if I want the charger to charge the battery and the battery to run the 12 volt electrics, well, I've got, to, I've got to sort of connect the shore power back through here. Um, and that would mean that the 230 volt would then not be live at the other end. Or, and or, I'll have to connect up all the 230 volts at the same time. So it's quite a big job um, to get it all done. It's like rewiring the boat, getting all that in, <laughs> sorting out the 12 volt. So I'm going to do it in bits. The first bit is, I've got this... Um, smart controller and the other one which is down here um, is this one, it's a solar charge controller um, model KLD 1220 and I've covered that up and I'm going to take out the wires from here because there won't be any electric coming through um, from the solar so I'll safely take out those cables, these ones, put them into here, and then take the battery cables out and put them into there. And then I can uncover the solar panel and I can use my Bluetooth to see what sort of generation, what, what, how many watts that is generating. And then I can decide what to do, whether I need any more solar or whether I'll get away with that. Um, but I'm gonna get on with the work. Okay, so uh, that's the wires changed over, and I've got them. Charge control just on the on the bench there. I've got to take this one away. Um, all, all the cables are like super fat, um, and they hardly fit in. So I've really got to um, think about redoing that. Um, but I'm happy that I can just, uh, they are connected in and uh, they just need a, a little bit of insulation between between those terminals so they don't uh, short out between. But what I have got is now got a very good idea from the Victron Connect app to tell me that there's 24 watts coming in 
at 17 volts and uh, that's given me a charge current of 1.8 amps and it is in bulk mode because the batteries are blooming flat so what this doesn't tell me, it doesn't tell me the state of the battery um, because I'd need the battery monitoring in place for that and I don't have that at all there's no battery monitoring on here apart from um, when you go up on the uh, stern deck there's this voltmeter there's a really old style sort of voltmeter you, you might have had in an old car um, it's now up to uh, nearly nearly 13 volts um, but I know that those batteries don't really they don't really hold their charge for more than a couple of days so uh, they are a bit ropey um, there's, there's no way of knowing uh, before we bought the boat because um, everything worked they were all sort of fully charged up when we saw it um, the surveyor would have uh, started the engine up got all that going um, then sort of checked out the electrics and you know made sure everything was working and he, and he did and, that, and it all was but now we're using it um, full time uh, we use the batteries quite a lot because all of the lighting's 12 volt these these lights up here they're 12 volt but they're the little um, tube strips and what I want to do is I want to change all those out because they don't they don't give much light at all <coughs> and they're you know, we've got another um, <coughs> 230 volt light over here that's plugged in to a to a 230 volt socket and that's enormously bright so we use that and it shines over this way in the kitchen um, but the other 12 volt lights are like really really awful um, these things very quaint um, in terms of you know the character of the boat very quaint but uh, <laughs> that is quite bright but um, as the battery volts drop this gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and um, on occasion I think if you watch recent videos uh, you will you will know that um, we've had problems with the water pump not working because that's 12 volt so it's all got to be changed and I'm um, I mean this is the first little job to get to get move on and get the electrics how I want them and how they should be because they're certainly not at the moment but there you are um, first little job done I've just got to mount that on the wall and uh, I've, I've finished